Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first of hopefully many podcasts. Well, kind of the first. We actually had one a while back before The Force Awakens. I actually think it was the week before The Force Awakens was the only one that we did, and then we never really got around to doing another one. So we've kind of rebooted it. Anyway, welcome to the first ever, or what we will be calling the first ever, Rule of Two podcast, where we will be talking everything Star Wars. I am Cor, of course, and the Stupendous Wave, and I am joined here with my co-host today, who is simply known as Anthony. Hello, everybody. I don't have a cool name. Just Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> so today we'll be talking about a few topics. Um, we have a general theme for the course of our podcast, and the first episode we're going to try and keep anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, not a long one, just kind of almost like a test run, of course, this being the first the first one that we're doing, and kind of the theme that we decided to go with over the course of this podcast was how we feel about Legends and canon, and more specifically, things that we want from Le- Legends to become canon, maybe to see again, and overall how the fans have reacted to the whole Legends thing when Disney came in, and they turned a lot of the EU stuff that was not the movies and a few other things into, like the Clone Wars TV show, into what they refer to now as legends, which makes sense because it they're legends that they've heard before, and there's always truth in legends, which we heard Ahsoka say in Rebels, and that's kind of how it's gone, that all of this stuff before, they're legends, there may be some things that really happened in them, and there are other things that may have been... Uh, changed around it didn't really happen or exaggerated somewhat and that's kind of how it's been explained by disney and i think that that was pretty appropriate it doesn't fully throw out everything that has potential that we could see later on which is actually a topic later on that we'll discuss but the first one that we've decided to talk about is bringing star killer back into canon number one if it will happen and number two if they do it how will they do it effectively now, Star Killer, probably the most popular EU character. We actually had a discussion about this. It's probably Revan and Star Killer are the two most popular EU yeah. characters that we know about right now. Those are two very, very popular characters. Those are characters with huge fan bases. And um, recently in Rebels, we saw Kanan got his eyes blinded out by, well, blinded, I guess is the correct term, uh, by Darth Maul mm-hmm. in the finale of Rebels, season two finale. And he's kind of taken on some of the traits of Rom Coda. And he even looks like a younger Rom Coda. So obviously a lot of people are saying now that Kanan is like this, who's going to be the Starkiller character? And some people have said that Ezra is the Starkiller character, but I don't really think so because they're very different characters actually at their core. Uh, Ezra and Starkiller are quite different actually. And in a way, Kanan and Rom Coda, they're, they're pretty similar. Uh, they're both Jedi, both very unconventional Jedi. I mean, Rom Kota was even an unconventional Jedi before the whole Order 66 thing went down. And for those of you that don't know, he actually had his own little squadron, his own little group, because he never trusted the clones. And therefore, when Order 66 occurred, he was not with the clone troopers, and that's how he was able to get away. I'm not sure if everyone knows that, but that's really cool. Um, Kanan, of course, a very unconventional Jedi because... He never got to finish his training. He never became a Jedi Knight. He's a Jedi Knight now, um, but he met that path and he met that goal a very different way. And it took him longer than it would most Jedi because he decided to take a little break, I guess. Um, And he didn't really know who he was. And in Rebels, we saw he decided to take that back on again. So Starkiller in canon. Um, I've brought up Rebels already. I think that if it's going to be anywhere, it's going to be in Rebels. I don't think it's going to be in Rogue One, despite the name of Mads Mikkelsen's character being Galen. I think that it's most likely that if he will show up, it will be in Rebels. Maybe not Season 3, but maybe somewhere down the line. Do you have any thoughts? Well, um, as far as the whole Galen, uh, Mads Mikkelsen character, and uh, not Rebels, um, Rogue One... Uh, we could already assume we know what that character is going to be. We already know that's uh, Felicity Jones' father, uh, Jen's father. And we think that he's going to be like the mastermind behind the Death Star. Uh, but as far as Starkiller being uh, in canon again, I think it's more likely that we'll see his story kind of be told through Ezra and Kanan or the Force Unleashed uh, story told through those characters. Uh, can we actually see Starkiller? I think it's still possible. It would be cool to see him show up in Rebels Season 3. 
Uh, I would say, though, that it's more likely the other way, because I feel like if they were going to introduce Starkiller again, that the time has almost come and passed for it. I feel like if they wanted to do that, uh, they would have used the Starkiller character as uh, the role that the Inquisitors played, where uh, they were being sent by like uh, Vader to go hunt down these uh, last few Jedi, and I think that would have been a really great way to introduce Starkiller. Um, but, you know, needless to say, they could still do that. There's still a ton of opportunities, and I would love to see him back in canon. I really like uh, The Force Unleashed. It's a pretty well-told story. And as far as uh, Starkiller's story and, and Ezra's story not being the same, like they're kind of on opposite paths, I don't actually uh, fully agree with that because... Starkiller, he, as a child, you know, he's his father's a Jedi, and he knows the way of the Force. I assume he starts on the light side, it's pretty clear, and then he goes uh, to the dark side, and Vader trains him, and becomes like a Jedi killer, and then at the end, he, you know, ends up back on the light side, because he realizes that that's just uh, the place he wants to be. He realizes that's where you fight the good fight. And I think that if they tell Ezra's story like that, where he, they bring him to the dark side and he's still fairly young and they could even have him uh, be in the dark side or be a part of the dark side for a really long time. But if, as long as they end his story with him going back to the light side, I think that uh, you could do some really cool parallels between the characters and in a way tell that story without having to bring... Uh, Star Killer back in the canon. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is something that we differ on because I just don't think. Remember, Rebels takes place five years before New Hope, so if they have to do this, if they're going to do this, they have to jump on it immediately, oh, yeah. and they have to put Ezra as an apprentice to, I guess, Vader or someone else. Maul, although that's looking less and less likely, immediately they have to jump on it if they're going to do that story, because time is running out as far as timeline goes. I don't think that Ezra... Ezra's actually, like, the anti-Starkiller to me, almost. Someone who has started out his journey on the light side and then just kind of has this inherently dark streak in him. And then, as opposed to Starkiller, who started off on the dark side and was all the time under the guise of the dark side for the majority of his life, and he always had this light streak in him. So, to me, the characters are almost opposites, which isn't a bad thing. That doesn't mean yeah. each character is bad, but I don't view them... They're kind of similar, not really. They just, uh, they have similar paths in the sense that they're just completely opposites. Yeah. And as far as um, them making the characters similar, I want it to, I, I would have a hard time thinking that they would have this uh, Ezra character and focus on making him just like Starkiller because it's like, well, if you're going to make new characters, make new characters. Don't just make these characters uh, to embody all the personality traits of another character like if you're already doing this so you might as well go all the way and actually make a character instead of kind of uh being lazy with it and just telling the stories that we already know at the same time i would like him to embody some of the traits but i don't want him to just be copy and paste star killer so and i do agree with you like he is in a lot of ways very different but what i was saying is like you could find a way to make their stories a little similar but, um, you brought up the Inquisitors, and I think that seeing maybe another Inquisitor, although it was said that we would be seeing less and less of them by Dave Filoni, mm -hmm. um, but he could come and play an Inquisitor role, the Starkiller-like character, maybe even a Hand of the Apprentice type role, uh, Hand of the Apprentice, uh, Hand to the Emperor or Hand of the Emperor type role, mm -hmm. because the Hands of the Emperor, they're a big piece in the uh, EU, and they're, they're kind of like Inquisitors, only they can bypass Vader. But I think if they're going to do Starkiller, they need to put him underneath Vader because that's a very special relationship. Maybe we could get one more Inquisitor and that Inquisitor is a younger person like uh, Starkiller would be kind of in between the ages of Ezra and Kanan. That's how I think if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. That's yeah. how I think it's going to be. Um, overall, I really hope that they do do that. I don't think that... It will happen immediately in the series because Darth Maul is said to be the main antagonist for all of season three. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good idea. Um, but as far as like season four and season five, maybe even season six, I think that it's a good choice to maybe bring in a character like that um, to kind of canonize it. And then like I've said it before in one of my videos, I can't exactly remember when. It might have been a predictions video. But I would love to see 
two characters in the same series take very different paths with Ezra starting on the light and transitioning over to the dark and then a Starkiller-esque character starting from the dark side and transitioning over to the light and we can get an interesting story between the two of them. Maybe even in the end Ezra decides to kill this one, to kill this new character, something like that. Overall, um, it's 50-50 at this point for Starkiller mm-hmm. being brought into canon I would like to see it if they do it well. At the same time, you have to be very careful not to shoehorn in characters because that's very dangerous. Yeah. And it's like what they've done with Kanan is pretty good. He's kind of going to be like Ram Coda, I guess, although Ram Coda is much harsher than Kanan is yeah, right we're, now. We're probably not going to see Kanan getting drunk by himself in a bunch of bars. Probably not. <laughs> not in Rebels. Um, but... I mean, as far as the designs go, I guess eventually we could see Ezra taking on some traits that are like Starkiller, but that doesn't mean he is Starkiller. Yeah. Uh, we could see Kanan even, I mean, is uh, Ezra take on two lightsabers similar to the way Starkiller was, although he didn't start off in that in the first game. He had one lightsaber, but the Starkiller clone had two. Maybe we could see that in season three, because the way they did the Clone Wars TV show is in season three, they actually changed the outfits of the Jedi, the leads. Uh, they changed of uh, Ahsoka, Obi Wan, and uh, of course Anakin, and I think that that will happen again in Rebels. Maybe Ezra will come back with two lightsabers. Maybe even as like a thing for Ahsoka. Maybe he'll hold oh, yeah. the reverse grip like Ahsoka held hers, and that way he starts to look more and more like Star Killer. And that's a big thing that I'm looking forward to in season three. By the way, I just want to bring the, that the up is the redesigns. Mm-hmm. I think that hopefully will be really cool. We haven't seen any redesigns yet. We got a Twitter picture from Dave Filoni of Rex but wearing a new helmet but other than that no nothing so far and I really hope that they decide to redesign it just like they did with season three of the Clone Wars so yeah that's basically our two cents on Starkiller let's move on to the next topic and that is one character we could bring into canon if we could you want to start off uh I think I would really like to see Revan brought back in because Revan's just this incredibly cool character. I would. I don't know how I would want him to be brought back in. I want. I wouldn't want him to be brought in through like Rebels or something, uh, either through like a video game or I guess a novel, uh, but something like that was really mature, because uh, I've been uh, doing a lot of research on Revan lately, and he's just really awesome. He's so smart. He's like one of the smartest Sith ever. He's got a great design. Uh, and he's scary. Like, I think what you said, like a novel would be cool to see yeah. Revan back. Like and, a canon novel mm-hmm. or even a comic series. It's fine to go back. Yeah. But a lot of people have said that they it could be Revan in the Holocron in Rebels Season 3 that they have yeah. swapped his gender from male to female, which I don't think that that's going to destroy the character, but I would prefer that they keep him male. Yeah. But Revan's a great pick, and that actually leads me into mine – and that is that I would like to see Darth Treya be brought into canon via Rebels, via the Holocron in Season 3. Number one, we know it's a female's voice, of course, which means it's a female. It's a Sith Holocron, so that nails it down to, like, it's a Sith Lord, obviously. And I think that it's going to be Treya. It's Treya or Revan, I think, that's in that Holocron, actually. Yeah. So this is two. these are two really interesting picks because I think that either one or the other is going to be brought into canon sometime in season three of rebels so it'll be interesting to find out fingers crossed they go with darth treya because she's a really interesting character she's another character kind of similar to ezra who's had that fight within her about the light and the dark and she was she started off as a jedi and uh fell to the dark side and then she helped train two of the most powerful sith lords that we know scion and nihilus but yeah i think that treya is a great pick she's very intelligent she knows a lot of history um Her being an ancient Sith Lord, being an ancient Sith Lord, she has studied a lot of the other Sith Lords that came before her, and I just think that she's a great pick. And she she Mm -hmm. came after Revan, and there's not really a lot that you could do with her that would step on the toes of Revan. I mean, Mm -hmm. you could still do Revan after that. But that's my pick. Both of those are good. I think that what is likely in the Holocron is probably Treya. I really hope so. I hope that they don't gender swap Revan, but at the same time, if someone went up to me and they're like, if it does turn out to be Revan, are you not going to be happy yeah. that it is Revan that he's back in mm-hmm. canon? And it's absolutely not. If they bring Revan back in any form, I'll be excited. So, 
yeah, those are our two picks, Revan and Treya. Go ahead and leave in the comments or even tweet at us with, uh, what Sith Lord or even character you would bring back. Also, I'd love to see maybe a Kyle Katarn like character later down the road yeah. as far as Jedi's go. I was just going to say Kyle Katarn. <laughs> yeah. Finn is a little bit similar to him with mm-hmm. this story because they both were stormtroopers. But as far as the new canon and in the films, which is where they would have to bring a character like that in because he takes. He's a character that comes in after Return of the yeah. Jedi. I think that maybe down the line, maybe in an episode 10, 11, or 12, or who knows, maybe even the immediate future, we could see a Kyle Katarn like character. Speaking of down the line, what about Darth Krayt? Yes, please. That would please. be really cool. I love Darth Krayt. And you could even do Darth Krayt now uh, sooner uh, than later, because since he's not canon, you don't have to stick to what was it like oh, about a hundred years after return of the jedi or something like 120 years something like that so it was like if they wanted they could do that like right after this trilogy and darth crate would be awesome darth crate is one of my favorite sith lords he is my favorite sith lord i he's he's a man in the galaxy that has done everything yeah. <laughs> bounty hunter jedi jedi master sith lord not sith leader he ruled the mm-hmm. sith empire not not with just another apprentice. He did it all by himself. He, yeah, he created the rule of the one Sith <laughs> that did not make Darth Bane very happy. But he did do it. <laughs> Darth Krayt's awesome. That's, that was, that's really cool how he uh, found Bane's holocron and like was trying to figure out if like the rule of the one Sith would work out. He was like asking for advice or something and Bane was like, you're going to kill everybody. Don't do that. <laughs> and then he called him a Sith pretender. Yeah. He, and they, uh, I think there was a few different uh, people on that holocron. Like, I yeah, know Nihilus was Nihilus there. Was there. And they were like, uh, this is heresy. Like, you're you're ruining everything. You're going to kill the Sith. Yeah, but Turns I mean, out the Sith isn't around anymore, though, huh? Yeah, in it new canon. Yeah. In new canon, the Sith are supposedly gone. Hopefully not forever, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think Kylo Ren kind of makes sense i have a video planned for this but i mean if he idolizes darth vader to the extent that he does and it's obviously a great deal that he idolizes vader but it makes sense that he'd want to become a sith lord but snoke (laughs) is not a sith we're not sure exactly what he is maybe a dark acolyte dark jedi who knows he's something though he definitely has some ability in the dark side from what we've heard, Supreme, not that we've seen. Supreme Leader Snoke does exist, and he is something. Yeah. <laughs> so that leads perfectly into our topic, and that is, who should Snoke be? Any major thoughts, strong thoughts? Uh, here's what I think. I think that Snoke can be anybody uh, as long as they establish his character and they explain away his past, uh, simply because... I am not comfortable with the idea that Snoke just shows up and then becomes the leader of the First Order. Like, you got to establish this character somehow, whether it's uh, making him a character that we already know. Uh, I know that the Plagueis theory was incredibly popular for a long time. Now people are kind of shying away from it, but we talk about this all the time. I think we still believe that uh, making him Darth Plagueis is still, like, the best thing you could do for this character because it's the most interesting it would be a cool way to connect it to uh, what's come before, while at the same time creating this whole overarching uh, plot throughout all these Star Wars movies uh, that could be uh, appreciated in this new one instead of it just being like, oh, Snoke just showed up. It builds a bridge in yeah. between all the movies. But like a ton of people have said, oh, he's not Snoke. And people at Lucasfilm have been like, Snoke is just, or he's not yeah. Plagueis. They've just said, Snoke is just Snoke. And I don't know what to make of all of it, honestly. I mean, Snoke, you can write the character of Snoke any way you want, and it will be fantastic. I like the Darth Plagueis theory, but my stance currently is, as long as it is done well, Mm -hmm. do that. Do the best story that you can do, and do it well. Don't let the fans dictate who someone is or who someone isn't. If somebody guessed who he was... Uh, if he was originally planned to be Plagueis, if someone guessed who that was, and of course people have guessed about it, and now it's more widely known, and it wouldn't be as big of a, I guess, twist, but I would still stick with that if that was the original plan. If it's not the original plan and people guessed it was Plagueis, then problem solved. Yeah, Your problem <laughs> solved already. No one's guessed it. <laughs> but um, as far as who Snoke is, 
it's not important who he ends up being as just as long as I feel it's important that he has had some connection with some character or organization that we know before. Yeah. Because you put it perfectly. I don't like the fact either that if Snoke just showed up and took everything over yeah. and he's just some guy. Mm hmm. The just some dark side entity that came, although that in its own right is kind of interesting, but we know he saw the rise and fall of the Empire. What does that mean? Yeah. Was he among the ranks of the Empire? We know that he was once very handsome. What does that mean? Was he human at one time? Because that he looks far from human right now. Yeah. <laughs> he looks pretty messed up. Um, but we've, we've been given all of these little things and they're telling us all this stuff and in my mind it's either two things they're either giving us little pieces of the who is Snoke plot and he's going to end up being someone else or they're just giving us little pieces of this guy's backstory but it's just, it's so puzzling because if he saw the rise and fall of the Empire he was involved to some extent mm -hmm. but he's not a Sith Lord where has he been? Is he among the ranks of the Empire? Does he know Sidious? Who does he know? He, I mean, there has to be a connection somewhere if he saw that, right? Yeah. Like, that's just the logical thought. Maybe we haven't guessed it. I've heard so many Snoke theories. I mean, Royal Guard is one that I've thought of before. Darth mm -hmm. Plagueis was a popular one. Past Apprentice of Sidious. Past Master of Sidious, even beyond Darth Plagueis, although don't do that. Kylo Ren from the future. Kylo Ren from the future. <laughs> He's... A clone of Sidious is one that's recently come up. I've heard that he's Leia. Snoke has been everyone at this point. He's Leia, yeah. <laughs> have you heard that theory? I have, oh. which is pretty great. Because if you think about it, they really do look quite similar. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ow. Yeah. Um, that was cold. That was very cold. I thought Carrie Fisher looked pretty no, she dang good. She did look great. <laughs> I think she looked pretty dang good in The Force Awakens. She looked great in The Force Awakens. I think they all looked good, actually. Freaking Luke Skywalker's back, Han Solo. Uh, Luke Skywalker just looks the best. He He's does. He's so cool now. <laughs> like, every time I think of that design um, at the end of The Force Awakens, it's like, oh my god, how perfect is that? But, yeah, um, now he's going to get a new one, apparently, yeah. for Episode Eight. But, I mean, Snoke has been everyone. It's important to... Oh, man, I just... It, he, there's so many options. We need to have another little piece of information come out. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's he's a new character. And as I said a little bit earlier, that's completely fine. As long yeah. as he has some connection with something, which he obviously does. Because us saying that he's seen the rise and fall of the Empire, that's not something that we just came up. That's not something we just made up on the fly to yeah. connect theories. That's something that was come out and said. We know that he's seen the rise and fall of the Empire. He was once handsome, that he's powerful of the dark side, and that he's the leader of the Knights of Ren. That's pretty much a lot of it and that he's been influencing kylo ren from a potentially extremely young age yeah so i don't know who he is again there's also the theory that i came up with that was he could have been a past jedi that survived order 66 taking that almost directly from the story of darth crate thinking that you could do that and that would work and i think that that still could work but there's a ton of stuff there's a he could be a anyone everyone and uh i'm happy with that right now i mean don't tell us who snoke is before we see episode eight or nine that's something very important though that if you come up with a bunch of these theories that people are just like just wait for episode eight and nine mm -hmm. obviously i do want to find out in the movie theater but it's still extremely fun to think about who he could be also he's been darth vader i'm trying <laughs> to think of characters that he hasn't been i've heard a theory of him being luke before yeah, yeah. He has been a lot of people, and it's not... He can be a character we've never seen before as long as he has a connection with someone that we know or an organization that we know, because for him to come in and just be some dude... Yeah. He also ah. probably has to hold some sort of great amount of power in that spot that he's in in the Star Wars universe that we don't know. And as far as it goes uh, as not knowing... Like, not finding out who he is until, like, Episode Eight or Episode Nine. I still want to learn more and more about him, uh, hopefully before episode eight, because I don't want to wait like over a year to find out. I'm really excited. I want to know as much about him as possible. And uh, that's one of the things that disappointed me about the whole uh, Snoke not playing a role in Rogue One, because when there was like that back to tank shot, 
and we were like, oh, is it possibly Snoke in the back of the tank? It was like, oh, that could be really cool. That could be just like another one of those little ways to show us a little bit about his life without revealing to us completely who he is. But uh, And then obviously explain it away more in episode eight. But I, I just want to see uh, where he is in this universe. And I want to know how powerful he is before, especially before he gets the injury. And I would love to know how he got that injury as well. But um, that's a big piece of Snoke. We know he's endured a major injury. Yeah, <laughs> that's another thing. But he, he is not looking like he is in the best shape. And then we saw that CGI render of him come out a while ago. Oh, that yeah. where he's he has like this gigantic kink in his side. It's huge. The man, or whatever you want to call it, alien. Yeah, he is not in the best physical shape. And I'm actually writing a script about how powerful Snoke is. And look forward to that, by the way, because I think it's really interesting. I've come up with a few things as concerning Snoke because you look at him, he doesn't look like he would be so powerful. But a lot of the things that he's done have indicated quite the contrary. He appears to be, and from what we've heard, he's accomplished the amount of respect he demands, the amount of respect he's attained, number one, mm-hmm. from people like Captain Phasma respect him. Kylo Ren does not honestly seem like the person that would just respect someone just because yeah he's obviously done something to have and earn kylo ren's not only just respect but just full and complete admiration Mm -hmm. he's clearly done something phasma have said has said before how much she like adores the supreme leader of the first order hux like all of these people all of these strong-willed people just bow before him Mm -hmm. and think that he's the greatest thing on I almost said planet Earth. <laughs> they think he's the greatest thing. The greatest um, thing on the Starkiller base. Yeah, not anymore. He's not on that anyway. Yeah, he's in like a mobile command yeah. center. I think uh, Captain Phasma once said something like uh, about the stormtroopers, and she was like, "Stormtroopers are nothing more than an extension of Snoke's will." Yeah, so, like they really love this guy, and I, you know, what I want to know too is if he's ever done anything like incredibly devastating to anybody. Other than, obviously, like, probably the formation of the Starkiller base and killing all those people. But, like, yeah. I wonder if he did anything, like, horribly devastating, uh, like, took place in any events similar to that prior to that Starkiller I'm sure base. he's like, done something that like, commands the respect to yeah. these people. Also, I've talked about it. I'm writing it in my script. I haven't talked about it before, and I don't want to say everything. But I also talk about how he remains pretty calm for a lot of the force awakens like he mm-hmm. he's not portrayed he's not a lot like the sith honestly yeah he's very different he's not his emotions don't seem to control him very much very the opposite of kylo ren actually his emotions don't seem to really control him that much and the only time where he gets really upset is when General Huck says something and he just straight stands up and like General oh Yeah, he screams general at him. And that was just like him slightly questioning him. And that's the only time when he ever got really upset is when anyone stu- stepped up to him. But he's very similar to Vader in that way where it, he's more like get things done. Although I'm not sure if Snoke would ever execute someone from across the galaxy we haven't seen that yet i don't i wouldn't put it past him completely but he may even be or have even a calmer demeanor than darth vader yeah you know why he's similar to darth vader why it's because he is darth vader (laughs) oh no (laughs) i have heard that one too because of the whole scar thing and how Mm -hmm. they all line up but uh, yeah there are just they are endless which is not a bad thing yeah. They're all interesting. Something that I've taken out of every single one of these series is I have been thoroughly entertained. Yeah. It's cool every to single see one. just how creative the fans are in the series, too, to come up with all these theories. Absolutely. That, and that's the thing that I take away a lot from theories. Even if I don't agree with one, every single time I've been thoroughly entertained. Yeah. And at least thought of something <laughs> interesting in my mind. But, yeah, I mean, Snoke, very big piece of the puzzle that is missing that and Ray's parents, I'm not exactly sure which of the two that I'm most eager to find out who Snoke is or who Ray's parents are. I think I always flip flop on these two, but I think that maybe finding out who Snoke is is a bigger deal to me, if anyone. 
And when I say who Snoke is, I mean like his connection, yeah. what role he was before. That's what I mean by who Snoke is. When I say who Snoke is before, I'm not being like which of the characters that we know who Snoke yeah. is. I mean <laughs> who is char- Snoke? What yeah. what is he like fully? What's his backstory? That's a really big one. Mm-hmm. So the next topic that we have is the Emperor showing up in Rogue One. I had a video about this saying that I think that he would show up in Rogue One in some regard. Maybe not a huge role. In fact, definitely not a huge role. But I kind of gave my two cents in that video. It's the predictions video. But they haven't heard yours. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think that not having him in some shape in Rogue One would kind of be a missed opportunity. It wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world if he wasn't in there. We all know uh, that one of the things that makes the Emperor so cool is that he doesn't really show his face. He like just manipulates people to uh, do his bidding for him. By show his from, face, do you mean show up places? Yeah, like show up in different places. He normally just sits in a throne and just watches from a distance. It was said before that the Emperor was always meant to conquer the galaxy but not rule it. Yeah. Which is 100% accurate. <laughs> but um, it would be cool to see him for a second. Uh, obviously, we see the Imperial Guards in the Rogue One trailer by the back to tank, or at least what we assume is a back to tank. It's, it looks like a back to tank. Looks uh, like a very high quality one or yeah. high grade, almost mm-hmm. experimental. Yeah. And uh, where there are Imperial Guards, there is the Emperor. But he, if it's like maybe if the Emperor is in the back to tank, then maybe we won't really see him. Maybe we'll just hear that that's him. I, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. Maybe the Emperor, uh, we've talked about this a million times, like the guy that kneels uh, in front of the back to tank looks like the Emperor. Uh, we don't know as far as the robes go. As but far to as the robe, yeah, fair, it's just a black robe. I understand, but it's it's like okay, black robed figure, imperial guards. I'm just gonna assume <laughs> because it makes sense. Um, but it, if that was the emperor, it would be interesting. I'd want to really know why he was kneeling. It would make so much sense if that was Snoke in the back to tank because if Snoke was nope, Darth, not Snoke. If it was if Snoke was Darth Plagueis and Darth Plagueis was. Uh, the Emperor's master. Maybe he would kneel for his master. It would be really cool, but apparently that's not happening. Maybe they're lying to us. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I would love to see him in it. He, he would barely have to be in the movie for me to be excited. If he was in it for five seconds, I'd scream. <laughs> and then Darth Vader obviously would have a bigger role, which is awesome. We get to see Darth Vader again. Yeah. And he's probably going to kill a lot of rebels. I hope and I, so. I cannot wait to see that. I hope so. I've heard it that, like, people have been saying that it's confirmed that Vader is in the back to tank in some places, and there's, like, a apparently like a Star Wars group or something mm-hmm. that has said that it's Vader in the back to tank yeah. getting repairs. But to that, and in my Snoke video, I bring up that he has a meditation sphere yeah. that he uses to get repairs. But I guess it's possible he could be in the back to tank. We've never seen anything like that. If that is a back to tank, <laughs> yeah. we've never seen anything like that before. And like people are saying that that's the Emperor kneeling. But like you said it perfectly. And it's something I said before too, where the royal guards are the emperor is either there or not far away mm-hmm. and it looks like that by the looks of that they're standing there guarding whatever that big thing is yeah or even the black robe figure and i i would say that i'm gonna say maybe like an 80 percent chance he's in rogue one i hope so i hope beyond hope because the yeah. emperor is a one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Period. Not just in Star Wars. And as far as it just goes with like Disney making movies, they want to make the fans happy and they know that if you just show the Emperor for a few seconds, it's going to make the fans happy. It's just, you know, building upon uh, the universe that we already know. Also, I mean, I would imagine that the Emperor would be there to see the completion of the Death Star. Yeah. So. Oh, and you said it earlier that uh, the genius behind the Death Star. I got a comment about this. Mm -hmm. No, the genius behind the Death Star does not mean he is the one that came up with the Death Star and designed it fully. Yeah. The way that it worked in the EU is, I forget the person's name, but someone else came in and they worked out the kinks in the Death Star. Yeah. That's what I'm talking and about then, with this guy. That Not that he actually designs it, because of course the design yeah. shows up in Attack of the Attack, Clones. Uh, yeah. And it's designed. Uh, someone probably might have already commented that, actually. Well, by the genius the genius behind the Death Star, if that's what Mads Mikkelsen's character is, he's obviously going to be the guy that's like, I made sure there was a flaw. In this. Yeah, that's a big thing yeah. that we want to talk about, too, that... Uh, it's a big spoiler. I mean, we can touch on it right now. Not a big spoiler, but 
that it's been said that Rogue One is going to fix the plot hole that there's just this react port that yeah that you it, just shoot and then the whole thing blows up yeah it blows up there's like a like with the second Death Star it can kind of be explained away that it's incomplete it's yeah it's only half a Death Star <laughs> yeah three quarters yeah, okay half, three, <laughs> it's not but, done but like that's the whole idea is that there's a man that says uh it's kind of what was the thing with the the nuclear weapon where it's like the guy who invented the first atomic bomb said now i have become death to destroy our worlds and realized just what a mistake it was and this is like mads mickelson going this thing is so destructive i need to make sure there's a way it could be destroyed yeah and that explains away that plot hole in a new hope where uh you know they get the stolen death star plans it's not a plot hole it's It's, plot convenience yeah exactly but uh that would be how they find out here's how we destroy it somebody actually designed like a fail safe and then they go and they shoot it and it blows up like a like he has spoilers (laughs) (laughs) like he has a change of heart almost Mm -hmm. and he mads Mikkelsen confirmed he is jen ursa's father yeah so that's kind of how that worked out and I hope, oh man, that everything makes sense. I think mm-hmm. they're going to do that. Yeah. I think they're going to do that. And I have a video about that later on, but I guess if you uh, planned, but I guess if you watch the podcast now, you kind of get a, or listen to it rather for now. Sneak peek. <laughs> <laughs> now you kind of have like a sneak peek. Anyway, we're approaching 40 minutes, so I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for the first episode of The Rule of Two. Thank you so much everyone for all of the support on the channel it has been Mm -hmm. monumental and real quick before we leave i'm going to check twitter as we said before which is as stupendous way for me by the way and for you at underscore and thanos (laughs) the link will be in the the description yes so we're gonna go ahead and answer a few questions for the podcast so this one is by Nate Skinner, and he wants to know some ideas for the supposed third animated series for Star Wars. Ooh. Right off the top of my head, I usually take a few days to come up with this stuff. That's a real thing. I'm always thinking about my videos days beforehand before I make them. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I mean, obviously, the easy answers are go before the prequels. Yeah, but take it a thousand years back. Yeah, because then you have so much freedom. Um, you know what? Period between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. That's oh, yeah. what I want. That would be cool. I don't want it to follow our characters. I want it to follow the Rebels and the whole transition from Rebellion to Republic. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. A part of the prequels that everyone hates <laughs> that I always found interesting, but do it live action is something that... Oh, he said animated series, so... <laughs> We're, mine's live action i'm changing it up do a netflix <laughs> series all about the politics of it because i don't know i am probably an anomaly anomaly with this but i want to see the transition from rebellion to yeah to republic picture it like this picture house of cards in star wars <laughs> does that sound awesome yeah we're gonna get kevin spacey no. <laughs> he's, he's gonna play the resistance general after leia steps down or something for some reason but that's something that i would what <laughs> I, I have no idea <laughs> that's something that i actually would really like to see and i've thought about it before because the politics in star wars have always yeah. interested me and before the, in the prequel era politics are not that interesting the, but the problem with the prequel politics wasn't the fact that they did politics the whole idea of that was uh to establish, you know, these crazy galaxy-changing events that happen in Star Wars don't uh, just happen without any political influence. Same way, like, anything in our world uh, works. But at the same time, you know, they had that idea, which was a cool idea, and it was just executed very poorly. Um, But not to say that it's not interesting. Of course it's interesting. That's one of the coolest things about the Star Wars universe is just how vast it is and how intricately detailed every little aspect is, where you have this entire senate that you know gets into these huge debates about these like galaxy changing events and they would never do that by the way what they would never make they'd never have a politic tv they would never do that that doesn't mean it wouldn't be awesome not doing politics anymore yeah straight up it was pretty obvious they they said they blew them up almost they said we're we're tired of this politics garbage we're gonna destroy (laughs) all these planets now and it's all over but um oh 
I'll take the easy way out on this and I'll just say adapt The Force Unleashed in an animated TV show. <laughs> Not the worst idea I've ever heard. Yeah. Not the worst. So one more question, and this is by Jared Lee Boehm. And he says, the chances Kylo gets a victory over Rey in a duel, they have to establish the possibility the dark side can win. Absolutely, my friend. 100%. Kylo Ren should, without a doubt, win in Episode Eight. That's how it should be. Should he win? Yes. Do I think he will win? Yes. But am I convinced that he can? No, because <laughs> from oh, everything I have seen of Kylo Ren, that man does not know how to swing a lightsaber. He is just a very poor duelist, I would say. Not the worst, but I mean, like, Ray totally beats him so bad. And Ray never held one of those things before. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> the man... The man should have been able to handle his own. Everyone's... I'm going to bring it up here because someone will in the comments. He was hit with a bowcaster. He was hit with a bowcaster. And he just killed his father. Even Finn got a hit on him. I would be traumatized. You know what? No. Actually, if anything, Finn should have had a better shot of getting a hit on him. Because at least he was trained. Ray's just this girl with a stick in the desert. And the force! <laughs> and the force! <laughs> I get it. She has the force, but come Give him on, time. Kylo. He's incomplete. He's he is incomplete. incomplete. I love Kylo Ren. He's like one of my favorite parts he of the movie. He is maybe nope. the most inter- He's the most interesting most Star Wars interesting. character in years, I would yeah. say. In 30 years. <laughs> Obi-Wan's pretty good. Jar Jar was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to answer your question, Kylo Ren yeah. hopefully will win and absolutely should, should win in episode eight. You do can't that. have them lose twice in a row. Do not do that. It's like this whole, the whole Ray yeah. is in like she can do anything she wants whenever she wants. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily agree with that one hundred percent. Although definitely I can see how it appears to be yeah. that way. Kylo Ren, on the other hand, I would say as of currently far more interesting than Ray, mm-hmm. but. He needs to win in the next one, yeah. and I think that as of right now, the filmmakers, I think that they did a good job with him being hit with the bowcaster. Mm-hmm. I got to think that somewhere, like when they were writing the script, someone was like, hey, JJ, you know that like Ray just totally just destroys him in this duel. We have to do something. That was part of the reshoots. Is they were like, man, he really lost this for no reason. Maybe we should shoot him first. <laughs> and they went back and had Chewbacca take a shot at him. That's a really interesting theory. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in the re- that would mean they would have to reshoot a lot of yeah, the duel. Yeah, they where he was punching himself in the side, getting the blood out. I'm sure that that was there from the beginning. Yeah, it most likely was. But it's still funny. Yeah. <laughs> that like, oh my gosh, this kid yeah. just got destroyed. We need to go write mm-hmm. something. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, if you want to... My assumption and my overall opinion on Kylo Ren, go watch my Darth Maul versus Kylo Ren video. I put all of my thoughts in that. I lay mm-hmm. it down. That's a, like, 20-minute video. I spend close to, like, 12 minutes of it on Kylo, yeah. realistically. And that's my thoughts on it. I also have a video called How Powerful is Kylo Ren, if you guys are interested in thinking everything... And don't go, don't comment down below that you think that I just think that he's such a wuss because I really don't. It's important <laughs> to watch those videos. He's definitely not a wuss. And the bowcaster, man, taking a hit from a bowcaster, big yeah. deal. I, and we've seen people get shot by those, those and things fly, and fly 20 feet backwards. Troopers, yeah. yeah, it's like impressive. Like he really took that hit well. It's also like I said in my Versus series with their durability and physical abilities that – Kylo Ren literally went up in that duel, in that hypothetical duel, that whole versus series battle, mm-hmm. with one person that is potentially more durable than he is. One of the few, which is Darth <laughs> Maul. I mean, take your poison being shot with a bowcaster in the side <laughs> or being cut in half. <laughs> I mean, like, both of those don't sound like a very good day to me, but I think I might want to just take the bowcaster one. Yeah, bowcaster over losing your legs. Yeah, not, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, man. What the, the Star Wars yeah. man? Take and a chill pill sometimes. No, no, it's awesome. Also, I mean, as and far painful. as as far as Kylo Ren winning that fight, they'll probably do the whole rhyming thing with Empire Strikes Back, where the bad guys kind of uh, win the day, and then it probably leaves it in a little bit of mystery of what's going to happen now. But that seems to make the most sense, unless they really. And I've heard that they're gonna not 
you know, do what they did with The Force Awakens and A New Hope with Empire Strikes Back. I heard they're really going to try to deviate from that whole... Which is a good decision. It is a good decision because we already got The Empire Strikes Back. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. But you said um, it before. Sorry to interrupt. You yeah, said it before. Cool. If they're going to copy any movie, I mean, you can pick worse ones You can pick Empire. worse movies. Because <laughs> yeah. Empire is amazing. It's so good. It's probably... It's definitely one of my favorite movies of all yeah. time. I would say it's one of the best of yeah, all time. In like the top three maybe my top three for sure your top three i know i yeah. know your top three <laughs> yeah i know my top three <laughs> but yeah it's part of me it's like maybe they should just copy empire strikes back i'm <laughs> yeah, being honest right. part of me is like just maybe do it yeah i mean it's a good way to tell a story it would get kylo ren a victory which we need to see i think we can't have him lose twice yeah uh Snoke is going to reveal that he's uh, Rey's father no. and that he's also Darth Vader himself. What? Luke is going to die and then they're going to cut open his stomach and shove Finn in him in the snow. <laughs> this is making no sense. I'm just... <laughs> Wait, that was so, a Tauntaun reference. Yeah, I know it is. So in your story, Luke, <laughs> Luke is, is a Tauntaun. Luke is a Tauntaun. And uh, Finn, but, I don't know, maybe Finn not and Yoda. Luke are in the snow. Maybe not Yoda. You make Luke a Tauntaun and not Yoda. No. Uh, Maz is going to be Yoda. And she's going to be in a swamp. And she's I'm going to stop you there. She's going to okay. train Kylo Ren. So now Maz is training Kylo Ren. Yeah, because she's really the Sith Lord. So now Maz Kanata is Snoke. Maz Kanata is the real Snoke. Snoke is just a guy. He's like the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. He's just putting on the image of the bad guy. But Maz is the real bad guy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you. I think I've deviated a little too much here. <laughs> so this one... Uh... Let me try and find one more question, one more. and then we will go we ahead We can put my nonsense to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, this guy says, Can you make a video on reasons why Yoda wasn't able to avoid being hit or block first for lightning from Sidious in Revenge of the Sith? Very simple. Sidious is super powerful. <laughs> so is Yoda. Uh, absolutely. Against Kanatuku, blocking things left and right especially at the end of the clone wars where kantuki starts to go downhill yoda doesn't really go downhill at the end of the clone wars it kind of remains stay the same mm -hmm. maybe a little bit honestly yoda as far as his, his abilities are concerned but if if you're looking at anyone that has in any capacity falters against someone with the power level of Darth Sidious. <laughs> like, say Yoda isn't able to catch every single thing that's thrown at him by Darth Sidious. <laughs> that's acceptable because it's Darth Sidious. Literally the most powerful person we have ever seen in the Star Wars universe. In canon right now, without a doubt, Sidious is the most powerful. Yeah. Let's... Well, I mean, that's like kind of the way of the Sith is that the as the Sith go on, they become more powerful because they got to keep surpassing themselves. And Darth Sidious is the top. And he's the, the top, top of it. He's the last one. So he's naturally just like bred to be the most powerful in a way. So that's why, that's why Yoda had a very rough time blocking everything and was not able to, I assume they're talking about being able to catch all of the Senate chairs. Mm -hmm. He just was able to catch one. Yeah. I think that when it comes to that Yoda versus Sidious duel, this is like the top of each tier, Jedi versus yeah. Sith. And that's something that everyone wanted to see at the time of Revenge of the Sith. Is It's like the best Jedi that we have at the time. Yoda, Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, those are the big top three. Yeah. Maybe you can throw a Plo Koon up in there. Mm -hmm. And then in the Sith, obviously, you have Sidious and you don't get better than Sidious. Yeah, it's like having a fight between and they gave us two Michael Jordan and LeBron James. It's yeah. like they're the best that there are right now. Right? Yes. Have been. Uh -huh. I'm not a basketball person. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I hope that answers your question. And Yoda, he did do an impressive time absorbing Sidious's Force Lightning. Yeah. Because, again, keep in mind, this is not just regular Force mm -hmm. Lightning. This is Darth Sidious's Force Lightning. And Darth Sidious's Force Lightning, even in the EU, and I assume now... You can't always assume these things, but it's pretty safe. Out of all the assumptions you can make, it's safe to say that Sidious is probably the most powerful yeah. Force Lightning practitioner that we've seen so far. And I always thought, like, people are always, like, saying, like, 
why did Yoda lose so much to Sidious? Why did he lose in that fight? I always maybe found that because, to be very impressive. Maybe it's because he's 900 years old and he's fighting the most powerful man who's ever lived. Yeah. It seems like that makes sense. And then it's like Mace Windu, people don't understand that with a lot of duels in Star Wars, that that's a very circumstantial duel. Mm -hmm. It's very circumstantial. That's why reasons like Mace Windu might not be able to defeat the EU Luke Skywalker when he would be able to keep pace with Darth Sidious. I want to touch on this real quick because it's something that, number one, a lot of people are confused about and something that I also find super intriguing. Mm -hmm. That Mace Windu, and this is canon because the revenge of the sith novelization is, is canon. canon because uh, along with the movies being canon they also said that the novelizations were so vapad is something that's they saw they call it a superconductive loop where it's a fighting style of form seven a variant of form seven where mace windu and this is the only time it's actually worked is mm -hmm. actually in his duel with sidious this is the only time it's worked to its full extent he's able to feel the darkness from his opponent and take it within himself without letting it touch his soul mm -hmm. and then he's able to kind of push it back out and turn it like, against him yeah so it creates again what's yeah. called a superconductive loop and then when it, in the case of Sidious versus Mace Windu like we've said before Sidious is the pinnacle of that which means that he's putting out all of his hate and all of his aggression and yeah Sidious is for sure for a lot of the duel going full on he's going full on on to Mace Windu. He's just attacking him as hard as he can, but then Mace Windu is taking it and he's pushing it back out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have also said, and I believe this 100%, that Palpatine was toying with Mace Windu for a lot yeah. of the duel because there's a scene in it where Palpatine literally just holds his lightsaber to Mace Windu's yeah. chest. Doesn't he holds it right out to he's him. He's just keeping him alive. He he's wants just him messing to see with the him. Show. He's like, look what I can do and you can't. Yeah. Look how fast I am. He's like, just wait till my buddy Anakin shows up and I'm gonna watch or I'm gonna let you watch the Jedi Order get destroyed right in front of you. Yeah, but Sidious He went easy I, on him. I for the first half, mm -hmm. but then Mace Windu, he got the superconductive loop going and he got Vapad going, and then at that point it became a duel. Yeah. I believe that without a shadow of a doubt that by the time they broke the glass in Palpatine's office that he was not playing anymore Yeah, in a way. Palpatine was not playing anymore. Palpatine was legitimately worried at that point, I would say. And then he still eventually threw the fight, I think, because they could have fought forever is what a theory is like, I think. Because when you have limitless power basically fighting against itself and if limitless means without no limits, which means it's not going to stop. Yeah that they could have potentially fought forever. And then I do believe that Palpatine eventually threw it. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's a very circumstantial duel. And that's why Mace Windu, like I said, would probably not be able to defeat the EU Luke, but stood a very good chance. And all of the cards were in his hands eventually with Palpatine. And so that's Anakin what... can cut his hand off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Threw him out a window. Well, he didn't throw him out the window. Sidious did. Yeah. But that's something that a lot of people don't understand about Star Wars, which is something that I love about Star Wars, is that all of these duels, they mean different things. It's like, just because this person beat this person on this day mm -hmm. does not mean this person would beat this person on this day. Yeah. It's, like, it's like I've said before, that I believe, in my assumption, that Darth Maul, better than Obi-Wan in even, I'd say, Attack of the Clones, because you have to look at the duel. Obi-Wan, he's got his a lot of rage going at the end after Master Qui-Gon dies. And at the same time, Maul had an opportunity to execute him, and he didn't. Yeah, He was toying with him because Maul got cocky. And that's kind of what I believe there. And also, Yoda, of course, he displayed against um, Count Dooku that... That's a very conflicted fight in Attack of the Clones again with Count Dooku. Yeah. All of these duels can be broken down, by the way, because he's looking at... Not only it. can they be, but they all have been. Yeah. Like, you could go and find out every little detail about these uh, duels uh -huh. and why they happened the way they did. It's like, why really didn't cool. Yoda, and not to take anything away from Count Dooku, but why didn't Yoda just absolutely demolish Count Dooku, or I shouldn't say absolutely demolish because... Count Dooku, oftentimes a lot is taken away from him when yeah. he should be. Why didn't he beat Count Dooku? 
The answer is because this is something really big for Yoda and Count Dooku. This is Master and Apprentice meeting again. This is almost mm-hmm. like Obi-Wan versus Anakin on Mustafar mm-hmm. between Yoda and Dooku because that's Master and Apprentice yeah. meeting each other again and Yoda seeing the, his apprentice, and not only one of his apprentices, but one of his most prided ones has fallen. And yeah, that's why Star Wars is awesome. Mm-hmm. Do you have any final thoughts on anything we've discussed? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed this. We're going to try and do it probably maybe once a week. Once a week. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it with my buddy, um, Anthony. So I hope you guys enjoyed. One more time, may the force be with you. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Follow where us we on will Twitter. Talk about, yeah, follow us on Twitter <laughs> again. If you want to ask questions, like we asked a few, well, we answered a few at the end of this one. It's at Stupendous Wave and at, uh, at Anthony, underscore Anthanos. At underscore Anthanos for Anthony. And be sure to ask us questions. And maybe they'll be featured in the podcast or maybe we'll just answer on Twitter. But we try and answer them all the time. May the force be with you and have a great day.